This message will introduce Jesus Christ to the world. The third pull has now been vindicated. There will never be an impersonation of that because it can't be. But it will not be used in a great way until this council begins to tighten up. When the squeeze comes down, then you'll see what you've seen temporarily be manifested in the fullness of its power. You've had the Word, and you know what to look for, how to stand. And everyone knows that for as certain as the first was identified, so has the second been identified, the third is properly identified. We know where it is. So the third pool is here. It is so sacred that I mustn't say much about it. As he told me in the beginning, this will be the thing that, to my opinion, I don't say the Lord tells me this, this will be a thing that will start the rapture and faith for the going away. There is coming a time upon in this nation where this nation is going to exercise all the power that the beast had before it, which was pagan Rome, when it became papal Rome. When that time comes and the press comes to a place the where you're pressed out, watch the third pull then. And it'll be absolutely to the total loss, but it, it will be for the bride in the church. This message will introduce Jesus Christ to the world. I told you and many of your witnesses tonight that it would come to pass that I would know the very secret of their heart. You remember that before it ever happened? About five or six years later, that taking place, and that happened. And then he said, if you'll keep being sincere, it'll just keep going. And now, the third thing has taken place. See? Just constantly moving on. Brother Woods here, and I and his brother was fishing down at the river. And Mr. Woods, brother here, Lyle, caught a little sunfish about like that, a little brim, I think you call him here. And the little fellow had swallowed the hook all the way down. So he just got a hold of it like this and just pulled him. He pulled stomach and gills and all out the big hook when it come out. He threw him out in the water. The little fish laid down in the water and the wind floated him back into a little cold. Something said, speak to that dead fish. And I said, little fishy, Jesus Christ has give you back your life. He tipped over on his side and on out through the water he went as hard as he could. So, is Mr. Shemp here tonight? I'd like for him to tell it if he's here. Sonny Shemp. Stricken down with a disease that five noted specialists of Louisville passed him by weighing about 45 pounds and was dying. While laying there, dying with five specialists giving him just an hours to live, was thus saith the law. You'll not die, but you'll sell me again. Red hots. I said, here's the red hots that I told you, thus saith the law. How many remembers about the squirrels? <coughs> If you say to this mountain, be moved, which was the second time it happened, just simply speaking into existence things that wasn't. The third time it happened was Hattie Wright. Is Hattie here tonight? That's Edith. How many knows Hattie Wright? Brother Woods and I were sitting there when it happened. And when the Holy Spirit said, give her what she wants. And we was talking about that, how them squirrels come into existence. And I said, it's the only thing it is, he's Jehovah Jireh. When I said that, a humble little woman, for the first time this ever happened, the third pull up on a human being was a little humble woman. And when I said, only thing I know is he's still Jehovah Jireh, and little Hattie said the right word. She said, that's nothing but the truth. And when she said that, Brother Banks Woods here is one that was present. That room felt like it was coming apart. And the Holy Spirit said, the same voice that spoke about the squirrel said, give her what she asked for. I said, Sister Hattie, you ask what you want to, and if it ain't laid in your lap, then I'm a false prophet. And she said, the greatest desire I have is the salvation of my two sons. I said, I'll give them to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And there they went. And they've been faithful in this church with communion. That little fellow sat down and washed his feet with the man and things like that. We all are a witness of that. That was the third time it happened. The fourth time it happened, I just explained it here the last time I was here, was up on the mountain where that storm raging. How many heard it? Oh, oh there you are. Where the storm raging. And I was coming down the mountain. It's so storm I couldn't even see my hand before me already. And I know just one thing, you're turned around because that wind is whirling. Now, there's witnesses here to that. Uh, you're right here. Brother Wheeler. Brother Mann, a Methodist preacher from New Albany. You see, Brother Mann in tonight. Uh, Brother Banks Woods. Are you here, Brother Banks? He's in the recording room. 
all right? And, um, and David Woods and uh, Brother Evans was there, I believe. Is that right, Brother Evans? Brother Evans, standing against the wall, was there. And how they broadcast for days, two days before that a mighty blizzard was sweeping the land. Brother Tom Simpson is here tonight. When coming down out of Canada, they asked him to bypass there because he couldn't get through. A blizzard was coming. Brother Tom, are you here? Where are you? Here he's sitting right here. And there are the clouds come up and out said brethren everybody rushed out there was nobody back there out of a hundred and something man back there there's nobody back there but our little group and the cowboy the rider and we was going to stay and up on the mountain that that day i said now when it first little rain starts or anything take for the camp i said within 10 or 15 minutes you can't see your hands before you when that blizzard and it'll dump 20 foot of snow just a little bit uh, over the mountain so up on the mountain when that blizzard started I started going down, and I was just about a half a mile from where I started, and the voice of God said, turn and go back. And I went back, as he told me, after waiting for a while, eating that sandwich that David gave me, and went back up there and sat down. And while I was sitting there in that wind twisting and blowing, the treetops leaning way over to sleet and snow, flying like that, a voice said, I am the God of creation. I looked up, and I thought, where was that? That was the wind, maybe. He said, I created the heavens and earth. I still the mighty winds upon the seas. And when I'm talking, I jumped up and took off my hat. And he said, just speak to the storm and it'll cease. Whatever you say, that's what will happen. And I said, storm, you cease and sun, you shine normally for four days till we're out of here. And I no more and said it. Until the sleet, snow, and everything stopped in a moment or two, the hot sun is shining on my back. I seen the winds blowing like this, coming back from the north, coming down. I mean, from the east, coming from the east, it was coming from the west. The winds changed and come back this way, and the clouds like a mystic thing lifting up into the air, and the sun was shining in a few minutes. Then the Lord Jesus spoke to me a little later on about my wife down there, as you know. That was the fourth time it happened. I said, Lord, she didn't mean that. Now I said, she's had to be cut open three times on account of she's cesarean. And I said, uh, uh, Lord, I, I hate to see her have to do it again. And just then I heard something in the room. I looked up and a boy said, stand up. I said, now whatever you say, that's the way it'll be. I, waited and I said, before the doctor's hand shall touch her, the hand of God shall take the tumor away and it won't even be found. That settled it to me. The doctor come in, was talking to her, and he come over to raise back the sheet to touch her, and just before he touched her, it left. <laughs> and the doctor didn't know which side it was on. He said, wait a minute. With the broad diagrams and all the pictures and everything else, he couldn't find one trace of it. He examined it over and over. He said, I might not be able to explain it, but Miss Brandon, that tumor isn't there. Just exactly the way it's saying. Before the doctor's hand can touch it. One split second and his hand would have touched it. How perfect is the word of the Lord. That's the fifth time. Five is a number of grace. A number of F-A-I-T-H-2. There's no more doubt in my mind. I know what the third pull is. And I know what it does. Now be reverent. Just keep quiet. The hour will soon arrive where God is going to do some great things for us. May, oh Lord, as you've been speaking for the last couple of years about it, showing it on marking on mountains and so forth and bring it on up. Now, I was watching to see what it was until it was completely confirmed. Now, I pray, Father, that you'll help me to be more reverent with this than it was before. And may you get glory as right over this same pulpit where the first was said, the second, and now the third. And what you have said has come to pass exactly what you said. We believe you, Lord God.